So often, as videographers and filmmakers, we can become so focused on capturing great visuals that capturing high-quality audio can unfortunately become an afterthought. It also doesn't help that professional level mic preamps are not typically found on compact hybrid and cinema mirrorless cameras and DSLRs. Of course, an external recorder can be used on set to capture audio, but then there's the need to sync audio and video in post. An elegant solution that enables professional in-camera two-channel audio capture is the Tascam CA XLR 2D microphone adapter. This kit features two XLR TRS combo jacks for use with mic and line level signals, along with a 3.5 mm stereo input, and is available in a couple of variants. A universal version that can be used with any camera that has a 3.5 mm input. There's an F variant for select Fuji cameras, and the C variant for use with select Canon cameras. Both the F and the C variants utilize the camera's multi-accessory shoe for power and direct digital audio connection. If you own a Canon or a Fuji camera and you're curious about compatibility, you can find a chart on the Tascam website. The CA XLR 2D is laid out as you would expect with an XLR adapter. The input connections are on one side and feature handy covers along with a removable mic clip that can hold a shotgun or a stereo microphone, while all of the input controls are on the other side of the unit, protected behind a clear plastic panel that stays open when your setting levels and need constant access to controls, and lightly snaps closed when you have everything set and want to keep it that way. To get to know the CA XLR 2D a little better, we spent an afternoon at the Federa Guitars Workshop in Brooklyn, New York, shooting some footage. To test out the multi-accessory shoe connection, we use the Canon-specific variant of the CA XLR 2D to capture audio to an R5C. Let's check out a clip from an interview with Vinny and Joey, the founders of Federa Guitars. I recorded the output of two Sennheiser G4 wireless lab systems direct to the R5C. Most of our clients are people who have other instruments, who've had many other instruments, come here looking for something special, made specific for their needs. And so if we can achieve that and make you happy, that's, that's what it's all about yeah. for us. These instruments, each one of them is like, they become like our kids. They come back and people say, hey, do you remember this? Of course I do. Something goes wrong with it. And when somebody has a problem with it, it becomes, it's our problem. You know, it bugs us until we fix it. The select switch determines which of the three inputs are being recorded. For a scenario like I just showed you, setting the switch to inputs one and two allows recording signal from both XLR TRS combo jacks simultaneously, while turning the channel link feature off provides discrete control over the various settings for each channel. The input one setting routes signal from the first XLR TRS input to both channels one and two. A neat trick when you're in this mode is to turn off the channel link feature, giving independent control over each channel and setting channel 2's input gain a little lower to record a safety track. This can be a lifesaver for run and gun situations or times when you don't have a separate audio operator and obtaining a solid recording is critical. I used this technique for the following clip where I recorded a direct line out from Joey's bass amp. Thankfully, I didn't need to use the safety track, but it was helpful to have it, especially since he was using a slapping technique which can produce sudden loud transients that raise the potential of clipping in the recording. Aside from a rotary gain knob that allows for dialing in up to 66 decibels of gain, each channel features a pad that's switchable between off, minus 20 dB and minus 46 dB, as well as an input switch with three options. Line is for connecting line level devices, such as a feed from the output of a mixer. Mic is for use with wired dynamic microphones or wireless systems. And the plus 48 volt option sets the input sensitivity to mic and provides phantom power for use with shotgun mics and other types of condensers. Each channel also has a switchable low cut or high pass filter with three options. Off for a flat frequency response, 80 Hertz and 220 Hertz. These settings can be helpful for minimizing plosives and any low frequency handling noise. In general, high pass filters won't totally eliminate wind noise or the hum of an air conditioning system, but they can help mitigate those a little. I found the high pass filter helpful when recording sounds around the workshop. This first clip was recorded mono using a DPA 2017 short shotgun microphone, and the high pass was set to 80 Hertz while the second clip was recorded using the Stereo Audio-Technica 
BT4025XY microphone with the high pass set to 220 Hz. You'll notice that the hum of the fan system in the background is a little less pronounced with the 220 Hz setting engaged on the second clip. If you're unfamiliar with setting gain levels, there's an auto gain feature that will constantly adjust the input gain based on the source level, and there's also a limiter that's designed to help prevent clipping. These features are certainly handy to have, particularly for run and gun situations where it may be challenging to keep a close eye on your audio levels, but my recommendation for the best audio capture would be not to rely on them more than necessary. One thing to keep in mind when setting levels is that there's no metering on the unit itself. It only features an overload indicator. So this means that you'll need to use your camera's audio metering. When using the camera specific interface, the output jack on the rear can be used as a headphone out for monitoring the audio inputs and a volume control has conveniently been provided. The digital connection that the camera specific interface provides also means that it's possible to use the CA XLR 2D in conjunction with a source plugged into your camera's mic input to record four channel audio, providing your camera and recording codec support four channel audio. When using the Canon and Fuji variants of the CA XLR 2D with the compatible camera, power can be supplied via the hot shoe connection, and this will be reflected via the power supply light. You'll notice that under the camera icon is a battery icon, and that's because the CA XLR 2D can be powered with two AA batteries via the included battery sled, which mounts on the bottom of the unit. It's worth noting that the battery sled can be used to power the unit in lieu of the camera connection if you want to minimize the impact on your camera's battery life. This also means that both the Canon and the Fuji variants can be used with a camera that doesn't support the hot shoe connection. The camera specific interface can be removed via two screws and replaced with the included analog interface kit. In this use case, flip up the output switch to camera level and use the included 3.5 millimeter TRS cable to send audio to your camera. I tried out this analog interface configuration with a Lumix S5 Mark II at a rehearsal to record the stereo signal from the Audio-Technica BP4025XY stereo microphone. Let's check it out. The top of the unit features another nice design consideration, a cold shoe that can be helpful for mounting other accessories such as a wireless receiver. One thing to keep in mind is that the unit and the parts are all made of plastic. Now don't get me wrong, it feels solid, but it's just something to keep in mind when you're plugging in cables or placing accessories in the cold chute. Also, I would highly recommend using the cover that protects the pins on the multi-accessory shoe connector, as well as your camera's hot shoe cover when the unit isn't in use to help stave off any connection issues. All in all though, Tascam have packed a lot of useful features into the CA XLR 2D. Of course, Canon and Fuji shooters can take advantage of the digital audio connection and the benefits that affords, but there's still a great deal of flexibility available through the analog connection for those who don't have a camera that supports connecting via the multi-accessory shoe. But what are your thoughts? Will you up your audio game with the CA XLR 2D? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, this has been Andrew with B&H.